Okay, good evening, everybody. We are going to call the meeting to order with a moment of silence and a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I do want to mention for the record that the uh, board held an executive session this evening at the Ad administrative center uh, between 6 and 7 o'clock to discuss legal and uh, personnel matters. Uh, at this point in time, uh, I would like to ask if there are any board member comments. I have one. Mrs. Spade. Um, I would just like to say on May 24th, I went to Rock the Hilltop up here at the junior high, and it was absolutely fantastic. <coughs> To hear them young people play them <coughs> guitars and we actually had a mother and son sing together. <laughs> it was just very enjoyable and I wish more of the community would come to things like that. Thank you. Yeah, sounds like it was fun. You had fun there. It's great. Thank you. Anybody else? No other board member comments? I assume there are no, there are no public uh, uh, No one signed, signed up, up to, to speak. speak. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Okay, then we could move on to... Um, Oh, I do want to make one mention that under board member comments, uh, Kathy Reed has joined us by phone for the meeting, so uh, just as a matter of record and so everybody's aware of that. Um, now we can move on to uh, education, and that would be Mrs. Bender. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The um, first item on the agenda is the 2016-2017 annual GPA agreement. Are there any questions? That, no, Arlene, you're breaking up. Yeah, I, you know what, Kath? Unfortunately, I don't think it carries well, well, real well from where she is. So that's okay, just okay. That's fine. That's yeah, that's just a, just an FYI. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, the number two on the agenda is the 2016-2017 agreement with Arthur J. Gallagher risk management services does anyone have any questions concerning this nope there being none the edulink agreement amendment does anyone have any questions concerning that we will go down to number four the 2016 2017 Adolphi Educational Services Annual Agreement. No questions. Mm -hmm. The 2016 2017 textbook adoptions. I had a question. Yeah, uh, line three is, is much higher. Is that just a matter of the number of textbooks? Yes. Yeah, K through five and stuff. Correct. Okay. And number six. The disposition of electric pianos. Are there any questions about that? I didn't know we had electric pianos. <laughs> okay, uh, I would like to make a motion to add the education items to the legislative meeting agenda. Second. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly seconds. Okay, we can move on to athletics and activities. Mr. Muha. Yeah, we have one item to add. Uh, the North Hills Band and Chorus are requesting that the board approve a trip uh, to music in the parks at Cedar Point in 2017. Uh, the, all the relevant information is on there. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. No questions on that? Okay. Okay, there being none, I move that item one under athletics and activities be added to the legislative meeting agenda. Second. Thank you. Okay, now we could move on to uh, personnel items, and that would be Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Wilgus. Personnel items are discussed in executive se session, so I move, therefore, that uh, items one, two, and three, the personnel be added to the legislative meeting agenda for approval. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Kath, I, I see there, we don't have anything under um, policy. Do you have anything that we might be forgetting at this, this is, at this point? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Uh, community and intergovernmental relations, Mr. Yeomans, it appears we have nothing under there, but if you have anything you might want to add. No, nope, nothing. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, we can then move on to finance, and I'm going to give that over to Dr. Nolish. Okay, thank you. We have um, three action items that we are we need to vote on tonight, and then a number of items to add to the agenda. So um, we'll take the action items, um, do those one at a time. Um, the first is a resolution 2016-2, um, establishing the tax rate at 17.8 mils. Is there a second? Second. 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 Okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, uh, excuse me. We, we're not doing a roll call on this. We're saying. Uh, <coughs> not at this point. We don't. We don't need a roll call cap, but we do. Uh, uh, depending on how you want to vote. Are you voting? Okay. I'm voting, and I was going to say something. Please. Prior to it. Okay. I wasn't going to vote for the uh, tax increase. Is that what we're doing right here? Yes. This is establishing the millage rate at 17.8 mils. If you have, you, are you, do you have your iPad with you? Yes, I okay. do. Okay. I have it here. Uh, but I would like to say that prior to me giving my vote here, if anybody's followed me on the redistricting, I would suppose we did not free up classroom space. Some buildings are reaching capacity. At the beginning, options that were presented to us either decrease the amount of teachers or currently stay the same. The last minute came option nine, which was voted on and approved. This now has projected approximately $400,000 in additional salaries. Everyone knows we, need, we needed to be creative with this budget, but no one looked to the future. With increased classrooms, sizes, buildings reaching capacity, thinking outside of the box for lunches, recess, we are not moving our district forward. I have to vote no on behalf of the taxpayers and hope this board can work together for our for our treasures, our children, that we make that their education as good as possible. I would like to also thank Christine Smudda, I hope I said her name right, for all the work she did on classroom sizes and all her input to us. Okay. Kath, you mentioned earlier some that we voted no. Huh? No, when uh, I say no. Okay. But all right, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Okay, so you're voting no on the millage increase? Yes. Okay, and yes. I think, Annette, you're voting no. Is that yes, correct? Yes, I'm okay. voting no on, on right. the millage increase. Um, so we have two no votes at this point. Thank right. you. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we Aye. did. I'm sorry. Aye. Aye. All right, so we have two no votes. Sorry about that. Okay, the next uh, action okay, item. Okay, the next action item is Resolution 2016-3, the Homestead Farmstead Exclusion. exclusion. So we, superintendent is recommending, and I am so moved that the board approve this resolution per the attached. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on action item two? Uh -uh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Third action item is the budget approval, and this is the 2016-17 final budget. It's, okay. uh, and so the superintendent recommends, and I so move that board approved the 2016-17 final budget. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I, ju I just want to add uh, with respect to the budget um, and, and all that we face here, not only us, but in, uh, in all of the districts in Pennsylvania, you know, one, one, of the biggest, one of the biggest hurdles we have every year with this budget process is trying to make sure we balance it and, and accordingly with and, and also make sure that we're spending our money wisely but on top of all of that and this is just i'll speak for myself and not for the board but on top of all that is this issue that kind of sticks in my craw and it's, it's the pension issue and uh, uh, for the last number of years since since this act and this uh, this whole process of of these pensions has been passed down to us by the legislature and and the uh, and the governors, uh, we're we're always stuck with the bill. And I, I, I have to tell you, it's just my personal opinion that uh, this this thing is, is growing <coughs> leaps and bounds. And if if this state doesn't begin to address this issue, uh, this is going to be a serious problem for all school districts. It already is. Uh, but uh, I, and all you have to do, if you need more information on this, is go to the state auditor general's office website and uh, th there's information there that will help you understand what's going on but this this uh, I call it this monster of a uh, 
of a, of a financial uh, impact uh, on our budget and every other district budget is becoming uh, really uh, to a point where it's uh, it's really impacting our our ability to uh, try to get these budgets straight and uh, I just think it's a travesty I think that uh, that this, the the uh, our state government has to get its act together they just keep talking about things they don't they don't uh, deal with it uh, and it's more from a funding perspective and so uh, I will say this I, I think we all believe this I'll I speak for myself here but again I think most board members believe this nobody here is advocating that pensions currently should be cut nobody here is advocating that those receiving these pensions should be cut it's just the fact that going forward something has to be done to sort of bind this problem as getting worse every year and and if my memory serves me correctly and David you can correct me if I'm wrong uh, our, if if they had to call in our bill so to speak for the North Hill School District our pension obligation is about 98 million dollars if I'm not mistaken I mean and that's and our budget 70 something so it's just it's just really out of whack and uh, I just again I'll speaking for myself not as uh, not for the board uh, I just think that's been a dereliction of duties uh, with respect to our state government when it comes to handing these kinds of things out because last but not least we don't have a vote in this we're just told what we have to pay and so uh, uh, that's to me it's a travesty but I'll, I'll I'll just leave it there but those are my comments so are there any other comments on the budget itself I, I would like to Please. say that um, I think uh, the district uh, in the past several years has done a, a great job of fulfilling its mission while being responsible and respectful to taxpayers. We took very uh, minimal increases that the past, my first couple years on the board, uh, the increases were in incredibly small. But uh, as Ed mentioned, the, the pension issue just keeps adding, uh, adding to our costs every year and, and virtually every dollar that will be raised by this millage uh, only offsets our, our contribution mm -hmm. uh, to the pension. So before, as Pat has said several times before, before we even uh, think about a, a, a program or, 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 or a new teacher, uh, th this you know, we're, we're already uh, behind the eight ball because of uh, what's happening with pensions. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look around at some of our peer districts, you see districts, I saw one today, a news story, they're actually borrowing money to balance their budget this Absolutely. year. Absolutely, yeah, it's just deplorable. Uh, and I think uh, uh, previous boards and other districts, another one is, is, is furloughing 16 teachers. Um, uh, did they perhaps need to make harder decisions earlier uh, in order to be in that bind? Maybe, but I think this district has done a great job of year e every year putting everything on the table and making the, the really tough calls on things like uh, consolidating schools. I wasn't on the board then. Some of you were. That was, a, I think, a courageous, but ultimately a very smart decision. Uh, altering the transportation schedule. I know it's, it's still an unpopular thing ab um, among some people in, in the community, uh, but it, di it did realize a significant savings for us. But there are no more rabbits to pull out of the hat. Um, and with, uh, with state funding uh, remaining a question mark, uh, I think this time around we, we were left with no choice uh, but to uh, go to the the max of, of the Act One index, um, and uh, again we also did it by remaining true to our values. We had a choice that we made earlier this year uh, to uh, stand by. Uh, the majority of this board voted to stand by our class size policy, and, and, and which yes has resulted in. in uh, some more teachers at the elementary level, but I think that was absolutely, absolutely the right thing to do. Maybe by one or two students, but they're not all going to be the same. It, it never will from year to year. What we did is we stood by a policy that established hard limits uh, for, for class sizes at the elementary level, and I think that's something we right. should be very and proud Dr. of. Dr. Manorino has the right <clears throat> to increase it if, if need be. So it's not as though we didn't vote for a uh, the increase in the classroom size. Some classes will be increased, even though we didn't uh, vote on that. It's up to him and uh, the principal. I think a lot of eyes are going to open up come August. But that's me. Okay. I have a question. I have a question. Yes. And I hope you don't. I hope you don't think I'm being ignorant. Honest, I don't want to be ignorant. But I need to know this. And that you voted for the redistricting. We're not increasing the classroom size, which you knew then that it was 
cost us additional mo- money for option nine, then why would you not vote for the millage increase for these kids? On a $77 million budget, I think all nine of us are going to have our own opinions as to how the budget money should be allocated. And I happen to think that allocating it so that we have students in the low class sizes is extremely important. I think it's one of the single biggest things that affect student learning and student achievement. And so I felt that it was the right thing to do to keep our class sizes as low as they, as we possibly could. Right. And, and you are prepared that some of these classes will be increased. Well, as I, stated, as I stated when I made that vote, we have more enrollment in the district. We can't keep class sizes. Everyone would like class sizes as low as, I said, as low as possible. When we have more students coming into the district, there's no way we can educate them without class sizes rising. But I think by holding to the policy that we set, as Mr. Yeoman started to say a few moments ago, we kept the lid on them, and we kept them low within a realistic number. And I still feel that that was, you know, the important, that was the right decision to make and with regards to class size and teachers. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Mrs. Reed votes no. Uh, okay. On the budget. Great. On the budget. Okay. I guess you have a few more items there, Dr. Nolish. I do. Uh, that was all we needed to vote on, mm-hmm. vote on tonight, but I have a a long list of things that we'd like to add for next week. The first one are the general fund bills. The second are the capital project fund bills. The third are the budget transfer, actually item number six, (coughs) I'm gonna get these numbers more consistent with where we are. Number seven is the payroll for the month of May. Number eight is the general insurance approvals. Um, The request there is that we award the general insurance renewals um, is negotiated by our insurance brokers, and that's actually going down slightly um, for 2016-17 as it compared to 2015-16. Um, there's number nine is the workers' compensation approval. Again, it is the recommending that we um, award that contract, and uh, that one is also going down uh, slightly by about 4%. Facilities use fee schedule is item number 10, um, and that is uh, uh, proposed rates are currently expected to be the same. Uh, Four years in a row, I believe we've had the same rates. Those are fees uh, paid by outside groups using our facilities. Uh, So I think it's great that we were able to keep those low so that community groups can still manage to take advantage of uh, what we have to offer and and school groups. Uh, The natural gas contract is number 11. And again, we have an opportunity to reduce our utilities cost. This time it's by joining with the AIU in the purchase of natural gas. Number 12 is a copier maintenance, maintenance contract. Um, our, co- our current copier contract is um, expiring and this is a one year extension and that has to do, I believe, with the, um, the age of the copier. Finally, number 13 is 2016-17 consumable supplies, um, arts, athletics, medical, physical education, sciences, and technology education. And uh, those have all been uh, allocated within the budget. So does anyone have any questions on any of those um, items? If there are none, I'd like to make the motion that items 4 through 13 under finance be added to the legislative meeting agenda for approval. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nolish. We could move on to support services, and that would be Mrs. Spade. Um, we have three things here for support services. One is the design and construction management service contract for renovation of the administration <laughs> building. The second one, wait, let me get it. Right. Um, can you call Are you there? We're here. Okay. I couldn't hear D anymore. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I'll speak up, I think. Okay. The huh? second one is for lunch, breakfast, and morning care prices. And that is, let me get my space. There will be no increase in our students' lunches. 
there will be a 50 cent raise in the morning care. So it will come from $3 to 350. And that is for, um, to hire some more um, help in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Uh, you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know. I didn't know if I got disconnected or what. Wait a minute, guys. My computer's. The next one is landscaping, I think. Yeah, landscaping. <laughs> <coughs> this thing's touchy tonight. Or I'm touchy. Well, somebody's touchy. Don't be so, don't be so harsh with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, number three. Uh, change orders for landscaping project at Westview Elementary School. We will be saving twenty thousand mm. dollars with the change in our uh, landscaping. I have a question. We're not cutting anything there, are we, on the landscaping? That we're saving twenty thousand dollars, Dave? No, we're not. No. Uh, the biggest item is simply uh, the Westview Borough is is allowing uh, us to utilize their dump for excess uh, material that the contractor assumed he was going to have to pay to dump. Uh, there is a change in the type of paint being used on the asphalt in the playground. And then just a general negotiated discount of, of $4,000. Okay, thank you. Dave, my only question is the paint. Is the paint as good as what we were going to use in the first place? Will it last as long? Are they guaranteeing us that? It should last as long, yes. It should last. Uh, it, it's just a different material. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I move that items one and three under support services be added to the legislative meeting agenda for approval. Second. Second. Thank you. I have, a, I have a question. Has, has the work begun? No. no? Uh, I'm not. It has begun on a couple of aspects. I don't believe it's begun on the playground yet. Okay. But I do know they've been working oh, okay. on uh, some on the sidewalks, uh, and some of the interior work has started. Okay. okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we also add number two. Number two, yeah, lunch and breakfast morning care price prices, absolutely. So one through three is the motion to add. Yes. Items one through three on the support services, and we do have a second on that. Is that correct? Yeah. Second. Okay. okay. Thank you. I do have um, one other question Please. for the um, design and construction management for the administration building. Will we be seeing cost estimates of exactly what's going to be included oh, yeah. in those proposals? And, um, yes, the, John, this is Thomas and Williamson, and, and you've seen Thomas and Williamson's work before. This is just to get the process um, started with the design and development. Um, the engineering of an HVAC unit is really what this entails, which is why we believe that Thomas and Williamson can do the entire project with construction management and architecture because there's really none. I mean, we're really talking about um, paint, carpets, air conditioning, ceiling, and to correct some code issues that have been in place since the building was transitioned from a garage into an office. So John Thomas will provide, you know, the monthly reports as he always has and um, the cost estimates and everything as we get closer to that project. This is just allowing us to begin the design and development so that we could then bring up a, a bid package um, to you. When you go through the document, you'll see the timeline is, is really towards the end, which looks as though um, we're looking at a December, January beginning of construction and uh, mid-summer, late summer 2017 completion. So you can even see just with a six-month phase that this is not, um, it's not an invasive project in any shape or form. I would just like to make sure that we really focus on on the mechanicals and some of the and some of the documentation they're talking about, the redesign of the lobby in the front of the building and, and you know, that to me seems less important than making sure that our um, employees have a, you know a safe and appropriate environment to work in. So, given that we do have a limited budget and differing opinions on how we should be allocating our funds, um, you know, I would like us to really focus on the heart of that project when we get those numbers and, and maybe not worry so much about whether our front lobby is you know, uh, the latest design. Mm. Just my opinion okay. on that. The, we uh, sure. anticipate that uh, there would be uh, security in that proposal, like uh, a fob, fob entry or something. Will we get it locked down the front? I didn't think so. I think 
we consider this as an office building as any office building would be in Ross Township. It's probably something that's not gonna be entry access like our schools are. We're, we're housing 4,400 students. So I don't think we had planned on a lockdown system, um, mousetrap entrance like we have at our schools. Mm. That's a good question. That's gonna be my next question is, is Thank you. Do you think of some people don't like these guys? Or? <laughs> I, I, I don't think we need a mouse trap. I could see Dave, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to put more money into oh, no. security mm, okay. office. I think a fall of entry would be something to consider. Yeah, I got you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Lori, I think we've covered all the agenda items, right? Did we we, okay. Did we miss any? Okay. So that being said, uh, we are through with uh, uh, support services. We've got our motion there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can now move on to the closing of the meeting. Are there, if there are any additional public comments from the public before we close? Okay, uh, may I yeah, before make we close? a comment? Sure. Actually, I'd like to make a couple. First of all, uh, Dr. Manorino, please tell the um, principals for me, and I'm sure for the board, how wonderful graduation was this year. It, you could see the hard work. Um, the great job that was done by the students. The second thing is uh, Beatty's Senior Recognition Night. Uh, that always brings joy to my heart. You never, you cannot understand the relationship that these children develop with their teachers because they have them for three years. They're more than just their teacher. They become their mentors. It was really well done and, and always exciting. Um, but, um, I also want to make it known, and, that, and I did tell the board, but I, I would like to make the administrators be aware that Tuesday morning I am going to be flying out of Pittsburgh to celebrate my last living relative's 93rd birthday. And I am just delighted, and I will not be here for the June 16th meeting. That's all. And, and I would like to just add what Arlene was talking about the Beatty Senior Recognition. Uh, we are fortunate to host that next year. Uh, so that will be uh, here in the North Hill School District, um, possibly even outside. We've talked about with a number of people that attended the event at Shaler that it falls in the same week as our commencement ceremony. Our commencement ceremony is set up and ready to go on Wednesday or Thursday when they would be having their ceremony. So I'm gonna talk to Mr. Heasley about the potential of having it at Martorelli Stadium. You um, do know they don't practice. That's they won't need it. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Then I uh, will uh, adjourn the meeting. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>